we're going to explore gdevelop. We'll get to know where different parts of the engine are and what they do. You'll start off on the Get Started page. From there we're going to go to the Create tab, where once you've made a game, you can manage it from this tab. But from here you can also create a new game. You can either start from an example, a new empty project, or one of these starter projects. We're going to start with the platformer. You can set your project's name and decide where you're going to save the project, either in GDevelop's cloud or on your own computer. So now we're in the Game Scene Editor. You can move, scale, and rotate the different game objects in your scene, as well as copy, paste, undo, redo, and delete instances in the game scene. You can move the whole scene around, as well as zoom in and out with the mouse or touchscreen controls. But the first thing we're going to talk about are the different panels in the Game Scene Editor. Starting with the Object Panel, which is where you manage and create new objects for your game. An object is basically anything in your game. Whether it's your character, the ground, text or particles, everything is an object. Next is the other panel that's already open, the Properties panel. When you click on an object, or an instance of an object in the game scene, you'll be given a list of properties that you can change that are related to the thing that's selected. You can more precisely control the position, scale, and rotation of an object, but you can also change other things about the object, like its opacity, starting animation, and z-order. Z-order determines which object shows up in front or behind of another one in a 2D game, and in a 3D game, it's used to position the object in the scene. Then there's the Object Group panel, where you can make object groups to help manage multiple objects at once. So as a quick example, if you have three different enemy objects, and put them inside of a group called Enemies, instead of checking if each one was hit by a bullet, you can just check if something from the enemy's group was hit by a bullet, making your game logic a lot simpler. Then there's the Layers panel, which is where you can manage or make new layers for your game. So in this project, the background and mobile controls are both on different layers, and so you can see that they're not moving with the camera on the base layer. They're staying in the same place. And you can change which layer an object is on in the Properties panel. And then lastly, there's the Instance List panel which is a list of the different instances of objects in your game scene. It's mostly used to select and find objects that have been locked, misplaced, or positioned behind another object. There's also another option in the top right corner that isn't a panel, and that's the option to turn on a grid to help you better align objects in your game. The next important component in the engine is the event sheet. This is where you can build your game's logic and help set up the rules for your game. If you click on the icon in the top left corner, you'll open the Project Manager, which is where you see the things that apply to your entire project, and not just the one scene you're working on. So first let's go to the Scene List, where you can organize and add new scenes to your game. If you add a new scene, and give it a name, you can then click into the scene, and open that scene's game editor, and event sheet. You can see that this game scene and event sheet are completely blank, and separate from the first scene in the game. So each scene has its own game scene editor and event sheet. Now back to the project manager. From here you can access your game settings properties, which is where you can fill in the information for your game, as well as change the game's resolution, scaling, and rendering method. From this window you can also change your game's branding and loading screen, as well as add icons to your game that will get used when you publish the game somewhere. Then there's the game dashboard, where you can manage your game and leaderboards, and see your game analytics, which show you the people that are playing your game, and how long they're playing it for. Then there's global variables, which get explained in another video, and the resource tab, which is where you manage the resources in your game. Each type of asset will have its own settings that can be changed, but for images added to the project, you can turn on or off the smoothing. Which is useful, because if your game is using pixel art, you'll want the smoothing turned off, but if your game has a higher resolution, you'll want it turned on. Then there are extensions, which will get explained in another video, external events, which are basically event sheets that aren't limited to a single scene. They can be added to event sheets multiple times, and in multiple scenes. And then lastly there's external layouts, which are basically game scenes that aren't limited to a single scene. So you can build out entire levels or chunks of levels, and add what's in that external layout into the game scene at a specific location. 
GDevelop, of course, has a huge range of other features and tools that weren't covered in this video, but hopefully this was enough to make you feel more confident in navigating the engine. And if you'd like to learn more about GDevelop, then click on this.